Hey everyone, it's Alex here again at The Code Wolf. And in this video, we're going to explore the new containerization features of .NET 7. Let's check it out. Now, if you're watching this video, I'm going to assume you already have a basic understanding of containers or maybe some general work experience with them. Containers provide a really powerful and convenient way to package up our app and its dependencies in a way that will run across multiple different types of environments, easily scale up and down, and leverage all kinds of other benefits. We want to focus specifically on the improvements to containerizing apps in .NET 7. This functionality is now built into the .NET SDK. Well, .NET apps have had strong support for containers for several years now, so what's the big deal, or what do these changes really mean? I find it's easier to understand the improvements in .NET 7 by comparing the process to .NET 6. .NET 6 also has great support for containers, but it requires a couple of somewhat manual steps that are now streamlined in .NET 7, as we'll see in a moment. So first, we'll complete a really quick containerization exercise in .NET 6, and then see how that same process works in 7. I also want to quickly mention that you do need to have Docker Desktop installed to follow along. .NET still requires Docker to build images of your app, even if certain tasks have been simplified. The installation process is fairly simple, so go ahead and download Docker and follow the instructions, and you'll be good to go. So I have VS Code open here in an empty folder called .NET Containers, with separate subfolders for .NET 6 and .NET 7. I'm going to use VS Code and the command line to demonstrate these concepts and avoid tools like Visual Studio or Docker extensions that handle certain steps for you so we can see what's really going on here. So in our terminal, let's type ls to see where we are in the folder structure, and then change directory down into the .NET 6 folder. Let's create a simple MVC app and then build a container image of it using Docker. So we can say .NET new MVC with a name parameter of .6 app or something, and then hit enter. VS Code will create that for us in the .NET 6 subfolder, and then we can navigate down into that project folder. I'm also going to quickly switch the version of our project to .NET 6 in the csproj file, since I have .NET 7 installed that was used as the default. We can then do a .NET build to make sure everything's in order. Now here's where things get a bit manual with .NET 6. We have to add or generate a Docker file that Docker can use to build an image of this app. There are plenty of really basic Docker file templates out there on the web, such as this one that I have open on the Microsoft Docs. So let's copy these contents and then switch back to VS Code. Here we can create a new file in the .NET 6 app project folder. So let's take care of that and then name this Docker file with no extension. So once that's in place, let's paste the contents in here and quick update the name of the DLL here to our .6 app name, and then save. I'm not going to get into all the details of how these Docker files work in this video, but basically this tells Docker to copy and restore all the files and dependencies we need for our app to run, and then builds an image that can be run in a container. Next, down in the command line again, let's build our image by typing docker build, and then tag this as .6 app, and specify the Docker file by name as well. After a moment, Docker will build our image successfully. We can always confirm if our image exists by using the docker image ls command, and sure enough, there it is. From here, we can run our app in a container using the docker run command and specify a port of 5000 and our .6 app latest as the image name. After we hit enter, this app will be running successfully, and we can verify that using the browser. So let's navigate to localhost 5000, and sure enough, there's our basic MVC app. Working with containers in .NET 6 is already pretty easy, and this exact workflow still works in .NET 7, but let's explore some of the shortcuts we now have for this setup. So let's move back to VS Code, and then in our terminal, let's press Control C to shut down the app. Then let's navigate up a couple directories and verify where we are, and then change directory again down into the .7 folder. Let's again create a new MVC project using .NET new MVC and name this one .7 app. That'll pop into our explorer on the left and let's make sure to change directory down into that project folder. Now this time we don't need to add a Docker file to our project at all. The .NET SDK now assumes certain defaults about our project to handle this for us. It also provides improved Docker context awareness so we don't have to worry about placing a Docker file in the exact location with the right configurations. 
The only thing we have to do to make this work is to add a NuGet package, which is currently a temporary step during preview and will probably be renamed or bundled into the final release. So first let's type .NET add package microsoft.net.build.containers and let's give that a second to install. Next, we can build our image directly as part of the .NET publishing process without creating a Docker file by running the .NET publish command. And we have to specify the OS as Linux, the architecture as x64, and the publishing profile as default container. Now when we hit enter, .NET and Docker will handle building the image for us. Remember, even with this setup, you still need Docker installed since it's being used behind the scenes. We can verify these steps were successful by typing our docker image ls command. And sure enough, there's our .NET 7 app image. We can also run this container just like we did with our .6 app. So let's type docker run with the IT and RM flags and specify a port of 5500 and the .7 app 10 image. When we hit enter, our app should start up just fine. Let's switch over to Chrome. And if we were to load up localhost 5500, Sure enough, we can see our .NET 7 app running just fine there. So in simplified terms, .NET 7 has essentially bundled the Docker build process into the .NET publish command, which removes the need to explicitly set up a Docker file. Now this feature works by assuming certain common defaults about your project. For example, it assumes you'll want to use a standard ASP.NET Core base image for the Docker build process if your project's a web app like this one. It also assumes you want to name the image based on the name of your project assembly and attaches a 1.0 version to it to start with. You can change some of these defaults by specifying settings in your csproj file. So for example, let's switch back to VS Code and open up the csproj file for our .NET 7 app. In our property group, let's see what will happen if I add a node in here called container image name and then provide a value of .7 custom or something like that and close that out quick. Next, let's go down to our command line and find our publish command in the terminal. And when we run this now, an image with a custom name will be built. We can of course verify that by running the docker image ls command again. Now this feature is still in development, so as it matures, you'll be able to specify additional configurations. I'm not going to go through every different customization option that's available right now in this video, but feel free to check out the documentation for that. Right now, there are also a few important limitations with this feature. First, you cannot add custom run commands to the Docker build process, which might be an issue for some projects. At the time of this recording, there are also little to no authentication options available, but this is an active development, so hopefully we'll see that soon. It'll be interesting to see where this feature goes, but for now, please hit subscribe if you found this video helpful, and I'll see you next time right here at the Code Wolf.